This training video is being brought to you by learningcomputer.com. Today we are looking at an Access 2013 tutorial, really, really how to create a Microsoft Access database from scratch. Okay, now what is a database anyway? A database is really nothing more than a collection of related data. So the key point is that you know there's a lot of lot of other items that you can store data in, but that what makes a database different than everything else is that it's it is related data. Okay. And it is uh, different than storing uh, data in, let's say, in a uh, text file or a spreadsheet like Excel or uh, any of those spreadsheets that are out there. Now, there are many kinds of databases that are out there, and I'll just highlight some of the popular ones. They are uh, obviously Microsoft Access, Oracle, uh, SQL Server, which is made by uh, Microsoft, and the free, ver uh, free internet database, which is MySQL, which is very popular on websites and whatnot. So definitely different types of databases out there. Now, within a database, how do you really store the information? Well, the actual data is stored in tables, okay? So, you know, those are the uh, objects in any database that store the underlying data. Now, within Microsoft Access, there are other objects also, including forms, queries, and reports. We are not going to look at those in this demo, possibly in a different one. Primarily, today, we are interested in showing you how to really create a customer's table from scratch and populate the data in it and then we are also going to create a related table which is going to be the orders table and then join it uh, to the customer's table so so that is um you know that is our to-do list uh, i guess and then a little bit uh, more on the tables before i jump into the demo is uh, you know really a table like i mentioned uh, stores information on a particular subject okay so that is what's uh, what's key about a table for example if you have a contacts table there should be no other information in that table okay similarly if you have a products table anything related to do with your products at your company will be in that table so that's an important point to remember that uh, you know a table really deals with one individual item and nothing more okay you know a little bit extra uh, elaborate on a table it's really a database table is made up of fields which are also known as columns and records which are also known as rows okay so the columns they store uh, an individual type of information let's say social security number a you know a customer name a phone a patient name whatnot okay now rows really store a particular instance of a table record so let's say like i mentioned you may have a patient's table in a hospital database well if you look at one particular row that has to do with a specific patient okay so they will have you know their social security number obviously the name address uh, date of birth and whatnot now another way to think of a table really is an excel sheet except but let me look at the, you know the exceptions but here here's an example okay this is i'm using excel so here's basically what a table may look like you have a you know customer id that stores information you can have a company name that actually talks about uh, you know the name of the company obviously and then you have uh, address related information okay so this really even though this is this is an excel but your you know customer table may look something like this i'm actually going to close this i just wanted to highlight that well if that is true well how is excel different than a database well definitely in many different ways but let me point two of these in a database, a field in one table is really related to a field in another table, and we'll uh, look at that in a minute. And also within a database table, it really enforces a stricted control to avoid GIGO issue. Well, what is GIGO? It's garbage in, garbage out. So if you are maintaining, let's say, your data in an Excel spreadsheet, really anybody can go in there and change the data willy-nilly and uh, that's certainly not going to happen you know if you create a database and put some kind of uh, uh, stricter um, I guess constraints and whatnot so that's that's one advantage of a database that it only allows 
uh, specific information. So let's say if you're in trying to enter a customer phone number and somebody types in alphanumeric, that will uh, you know not work. Now another unique thing about a table basically uh, uh, has a primary, it's uh, one of the columns as a primary key which is known as PK which really identifies a particular unique row okay so if I go back to the patients table again you know typically if you call the hospital they want to know your social security number or a patient ID number okay that particular piece of information really is stored in a column that is you know designed as the primary key that way they can tell you you know from the next patient or your name may match uh, you know John Smith there may be another John Smith in the table so how do they how do they know which one um, you know they need to update okay so enough chatter let's uh, look at a demo we are going to create a customers table in access 2013 so I'm going to go ahead and launch uh, access 2013 here I just want to show you a couple of quick things um, now you can obviously create a uh, you can create a blank database, which is what we're going to do, which is this blank database option. You can certainly search for uh, you know, templates that are out there, okay? And one option is also, you may have information on your SkyDrive, which by the way, it's a new feature in 2013. We do cover some other features on Access 2013 in a separate video, so feel free to check that out. Okay, it should be on our YouTube channel, but uh, let's just stay focused here, and I'm going to, select a blank database okay now as for the database I'm going to call this uh, let's call it cust orders okay and this is going to be stored on my local drive so I will leave that as is and hit create now in access 2010 you know and 2013 basically when you create a new database it starts out this default uh, table I mean it, it's it's a little confusing because you can see it created a table one and a field ID I don't uh, particularly like this so I'm actually going to right click on this okay and select uh, design view and for the first table we are going to call it uh, like I mentioned customers so let's do that okay and let's uh, minimize this. By the way, if you haven't seen this, the, the ribbon looks different in 2013. They have also, uh, every application's got their, you know, funky colors. So this is, uh, I guess, I'm not really sure, um, some kind of uh, violet type color. Okay, you can see that uh, down here, you know, we have Word, which is blue, and then uh, PowerPoint is obviously orange red. So you know that is what they uh, what they have done. They definitely have a different uh, look and feel. I'm actually going to cancel out of this one. Uh, <clears throat> so you know, keep that in mind. But uh, let's go ahead and do this now. Here, what I'm looking at this is the design screen for creating a new table. Okay, you have your field information, which I like I said is columns. Right next to it, you have uh, your data type, and we'll, we'll elaborate on those in a minute. Okay, and then you have description. So, and I, I don't know if I can move this a little bit. I'm using very uh, low resolution, so everything looks huge. But anyway, let's go ahead and start typing in. Okay, I'm going to call this my first field customer ID. It is going to be a short text okay description I leave it as is now let me uh, spend a minute on data type okay data type basically gives you the option to select the data of you know what type of data are you storing if it's some kind of date like ship date order date obviously it would be a date if it's a phone number you know you would want to store it like this okay if it's a yes no type field you know you would want to do that so always pay attention to this uh, you know because not only is it going to help you with uh, keeping good data it's also going to help you uh, you know keep your database manageable okay so now I'm actually going to add uh, some more fields here another thing you notice that uh, down here when I select short text you have this thing called field size okay that does matter um, the default is 255 I'm actually going to use specific ones okay so I'm going to go ahead and uh, you know finish typing this up I'm actually going to uh, pause the video and then come back and we'll um, we'll save the table and we'll enter data in it so please stand by 
So I am back. I have added all the fields. So let's let's kind of recap. So we have a customer ID, uh, customer name, address. Okay, and you can see uh, you can keep a note of the you know the field size I'm using. We have the city, postal code, country, phone, and fax. Okay, um, and by the way, default. Uh, Access created a primary key on this. If you if you need to create a primary key, all you need to do is simply select the field and then select primary key, and that that's how you enable the primary key. What that is going to do is it's going to um, make your uh, field unique. In other words, it will not uh, repeat that value again. Okay. So once you are designing the table, let's go ahead and click save. Okay. And now I'm going to uh, now that I'm done with my design view. I can right click here and sh choose data view or you can click here and go to data sheet view okay and so now let's this is our customer our first customer I'm actually going to uh, start typing this is the same information that uh, you know I had in my Excel but uh, let me just go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and type some of these and I mean entering information it's obviously you know straightforward Okay, you just uh, need to make sure you're typing everything correctly. And I'm going to go ahead and add this uh, address. It's actually, um, I used to live at that location. So I figured might as well do that. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay, and then, so I'm going to go ahead and enter some data here. And then uh, I, I will be back. And then we will, at that point, we'll move on to the orders table. Okay, and then make a relationship between the two. So, uh, shall be back. So, I am back. I have entered all of the information. Uh, you can see we have, uh, you know, uh, 13 lucky customers. Okay. Um, now, just to recap, like I said, these, you know, the one that I'm highlighting, these are considered fields or columns. Uh, as you can see, every particular field is holding a you know particular information. Okay, so the postal code, if I can expand this a little bit, has nothing but postal codes in it. And now, if I look, uh, if I look across, across the, in a horizontal manner, this thing is considered a record. Okay, so here's our friends, the Big Cheese Company. Okay, and they happen to be in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, also. Okay, so that is um, that is uh, you know records and columns. As you can see, I have entered all of the information. So now we are uh, ready to move on to the next one. But before I do that, let me uh, let me talk about a couple more things. So when you create an orders table, now uh, that you know the customers is ready, we can focus on the orders table, right? Now think of this: a customer can have zero to many orders in in database terms. This